Welcome to this section on data flow using Logstash and Beats. In this section, we're going to take a look at Logstash, data pipelines, Beats, distributed collection, and then how we can use Logstash for different inputs, filtering data, and output plugins. All right, let's talk about Logstash. Up until this point, we've kind of had some magic going on behind the scenes. I haven't really shown you how we've gotten data into Elastic uh, for those time-based metrics. Our first section, we talked about how we can manually put some data in. We talked about cars for sale. Uh, we wrote some Python scripts, and we had a good time. Uh, now, though, if you're using the the use case of system monitoring or event monitoring, typically you're going to pull in data from an existing data source, be it a log file or another application. Um, so here we're going to dive into Logstash, and I'm going to show you how you can do that with an existing piece of software so you don't have to write your own code. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, figuring out what Logstash is. I'm going to show you how we can do a configuration for Logstash. Uh, we're going to run a pipeline, and then we're going to add another data source from our, our first example. So that'll be fun. So let's start. So Logstash from the Elastic website says it's a Logstash is an open source server side data processing pipeline that ingests data from a multitude of sources simultaneously, transforms it, and then sends it to your favorite stash. So when Logstash first started, it was not part of the company that made Elasticsearch, but it started as its own project. And you could basically take data from a file and you could put it into Elasticsearch. Uh, it had other inputs, other outputs, other filters for the middle, if you think about it like a pipeline. But now it's it's been merged into the Elastic product suite. So it is a first-class citizen with Elastic. Basically, every pipeline for Logstash starts as data coming in, data being processed, and data out. So, you know, in on the left, processed in the middle, out on the right. So data in can come from anywhere, just about. It can be HTTP traffic. You know, Logstash has a built-in web server, so it can listen for HTTP traffic. Uh, it can come from a log file. It can come from a network. It can come from a zero MQ stream. It can come from Redis, Kafka, uh, or the console. So, and, and then the data can be processed in this pipeline. Uh, can be processed. You can you can change values. You can add values. You can validate data. If it doesn't match a certain pattern, you can drop the whole record. Uh, and then data gets persisted somewhere. More accurately, it gets outputted somewhere. So it can go to the console. It can go to a log file. It can go to Elasticsearch. It can go to Kafka or you know very. You'll if you look at the inputs and outputs, they're kind of similar. You can bring it in from Kafka and send it out to Kafka. Bring it in from Elasticsearch, send it out to Elasticsearch. Um, so there's lots of things you can do in Logstash. So let's look at an example pipeline. So you can type a message. We can process that message and and we'll log it out. So again, left input, middle process, right output. Um, Everyone's familiar with FUBAR, uh, how it is the, the prototypical example of software development. I'm going to show you how we can take a string, and if it has the word foo in it, we'll output it with the word bar. So it's pretty straightforward. So let's get to our console. So here I am on a, this happens to be the same server running my Elasticsearch, but that's okay. Uh, I have Logstash installed. I have Kibana installed. I have everything we need installed. So... Here we can see that Logstash lives in user slash share slash Logstash slash bin. Actual executable is Logstash in that path. We installed Logstash in the first video, so if you missed that, go back and find it. It's a pretty straightforward installation. But effectively, when you run Logstash, you always have to tell it where a configuration file is. This configuration file uh, can do a bunch of different things. So I'm going to quickly show you the default Logstash configuration file. It lives in Etsy, Logstash, and it's logstash.yaml. Uh, again, slash Etsy, etc, slash Logstash, slash Logstash.yml, YAML. Uh, so I'm going to open it with VI. And we can see, I'm not going to show you the data in here. I'm not going to show you what it does, but I'm going to show you. This is a pretty darn big uh, config file. And one of the things that it does is it has, you can define pipelines in here. Uh, but more importantly, what I want to show you is it has this path.config slash Etsy 
logstash.conf.d. And in Linux world, I'm not sure about Windows how they would do this usually, but in Linux world, a conf.d file uh, path typically has zero or more configuration files that get read in and processed within the application. So in this case, uh, we're going to look at wildcard star.conf if we're looking for config files in that path based off uh, initially that first Etsy logstash YAML. To run logstash with that file, I would run logstash. I would run logstash dash f and then give it the path to logstash logstash.yaml. And that that would read the default file in and it would do what the default file does by loading that comp.d file. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to run this custom file that I created. I'll show you this console.comp file. And we can see at the top, input is standard in. STDIN is standard in, which most 90% of the time it's it's you typing in your console. Uh, then we're going to filter it. And here I'm going to run some simple Ruby code that says, given the event, we're going to start in the middle, event.get message. So the message is what I type into the standard in. I'm going to substitute the word foo, the, the letters F-O-O, -O, lowercase foo, with the word bar capitals. And then I'm going to set the message to that. So basically I'm taking in the string, replacing lowercase foo with uppercase bar, and then setting it back. And then it will dump it to the standard output which will show you uh, this Ruby debug codec shows you more than just a message. It's going to show you things about the timestamp and, and everything else. So metadata. So here to run that, I'll do log stash dash F, and then I'll give it the name of this file. So I'll press enter. It's going to take a second and log stash will start up. Log stash will read that config file. All right. And I'll run sudo user share log stash bin log stash dash f console. I need to run sudo because logstash temporarily batches files, batches records in its installation configuration path. Uh, you can change that path to be somewhat writable, but I'm using all the default values. And here, I can run it now. So I'll wait a second for logstash to read up, and it'll take a second, and then it'll say, all right, I'm ready to go. All right, now that we see the output that says something about config, log configuration, we didn't set up any log configuration, log4j. Uh, now it says the standard in plugin is now waiting for input. So we can say, hello there, reader, and press enter. And we can see that, again, this is the Ruby debug output. Uh, came from a local host, version 1, timestamp. Version 1 is of the document message, hello there, reader. How are you today? Same message. Now we can test our filter i could say i once went to the foo to see the bar and now we can see my output i once went to the bar to see the bar so you can see it took that foo and outputted bar now i'm going to do a little testing here uh just to make sure it is being case sensitive we should see a couple of these non lowercase foos after i press enter uh, bar foo foo foo. Ah, I didn't do a global substitution, and that is okay. That's fine. I don't know Ruby all that well, and that's not the point. The point is to show you that the filter works.